Hi, everybody. Welcome to week five in our series on friendship with God. I'm so glad you're here. So far, we've been talking a lot about how much God values relationship with us and friendship and really just loves spending time with us. We've learned and practiced some of the most important ways that we can grow in friendship with him, which are reading his word, listening to his voice, and talking to him in prayer. And today, we're going to learn a little bit about what kind of friend God is to us or what he's like. I'm excited because we have another special guest teacher who's going to lead part of your lesson today, um, and she'll have more to talk to you about the friendship piece. But before we dive into that, raise your hand if you like stories. Me too. I love how they kind of help me to use my imagination, and they can really spark curiosity and wonder. I think hearing stories is also a really fun way that we can learn. And there are a lot of creative writers who follow God and love God and have written about what he's like, and it can teach us a lot. So we look to the Bible for the ultimate truth or for the things that are most right and true. But I think we can also learn a lot from these writers of these stories. So today I'm going to invite you to listen to a really amazing story. I think you're going to love it. So go ahead and settle in and get ready to listen. Hi, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening whenever you're watching this video. I'm so happy that I get to read a story to you guys today. But before we do that, will you do something that's kind of silly with me? Will you raise your hands and wave to me? Good. Or you can give me some high fives. Good. Or some fist bumps. Good. Just a way to feel a little bit more connected than we actually are. I can't believe that it's been a couple months now since I've seen a lot of your beautiful and handsome smiling faces. I miss you guys a lot. Um, but I'm really happy that Miss Krista has been doing these lessons for us. Cassie and Mason and I have been really happy to learn alongside of all of you. If this is your first time with us today, please make sure you go back and listen to the series on friendship. And that's what we're going to get started with today. We're going to talk about our friendship with God. And I learned how to say the word friend in sign language. So I was hoping you guys would do that with me. So you take your two fingers and curl them like this. It's kind of like two little friends. And they give each other a little hug. So that's how you say friend in sign language. And we're going to talk today about how God is our friend. And I want you to think about what qualities does a good friend have? So stop and think for a second. What makes a good friend? Good. Maybe you can think about your sibling who is your friend or a cousin, or maybe you have a neighbor down the street or somebody you go to school with or who's on the same sports team as you. There should be some things that come to mind when you think about them as a good friend. Some things I thought about were a good friend is kind, a good friend should be loyal, a good friend can be generous, they can be helpful, they can protect you, they can have fun with you, and probably tons more things that you guys have thought of. And the cool thing about that is that God is our friend and he has all of those qualities and more. And we do not have to earn God's friendship. That is something that is freely given to us. It is a gift from him. And that's what my story is about today. My story is called Just the Way You Are by Max Lucado. It's actually one of my favorite stories. And if you look at the cover, it's a story about a king. And this king is coming to a town where there are five children. Okay. And in this story, we're going to get to hear about the king and hear about some of those good qualities of a friend. So he's going to exhibit some of those good qualities. And the king in the story represents God. So you guys can pay attention to that. And the children in the story, some of them understand that, or one of them understands that you don't have to earn this love, but there's a couple who aren't quite sure yet. So they, you'll notice that they're trying to earn God's love. But remember, our friendship with God is a gift. 
so you guys can sit back and relax, and I'm going to read this story to you. Just the Way You Are by Max Lucado A long time ago in a land much like your own, there was a village, and in the village lived five orphans. A lonely family of fatherless children, they had banded together against the cold. One day the king learned of their misfortune and decided to adopt them. He announced that he would be their father and would come for them soon. When the children learned that they had a new father and their father was the king and that the king was coming to visit, they went wild with excitement. When the people of the village learned that the children had a father and their father was the king and that the king was coming to the village, they were excited as well. They went out to see the children and told them what to do. You need to impress the king, they explained. Only those with great gifts to give will be allowed to live in the castle. The people didn't know the king. They just thought that all kings wanted to be impressed. So the children began preparing gifts to offer the king. They worked long and hard to be sure the king would approve. One of the children who knew how to carve decided to give the king a wonderful work of wooden art. He set his knife against the soft bark of the elm and whirled, whittled. The small blocks of wood came alive with the eyes of a sparrow or the nose of a horse. His sister decided to present the king with a painting that captured the beauty of the heavens, a painting worthy to hang in the castle. Another sister chose music as her way to impress the king. For long hours she practiced with her voice and mandolin. Village people would stop at her window and listen as her music took wing, wings and sword. Yet another child set out to turn the king's head with his wisdom. Late hours would find his candle lit, his book open, geography, math, chemistry. The breadth of his studies were matched only by the depth of his desire. Surely a king would appreciate all his knowledge. But there was one sister who had nothing to offer. Her hand was clumsy with a knife, her fingers stiff with the brush. When the little girl opened her mouth to sing, the sound was hoarse. She wasn't much of a reader. She believed she had no talent, and so she believed she had no gift. All she had to offer was her heart, for her heart was good. She spent her time at the city gates, watching the people come and go. She would earn pennies to buy food for her brothers and sisters by grooming people's horses or feeding their animals. She was a simple stable girl, but she had a good heart. She knew the beggars by name. She took time to pet each dog. She welcomed home the travelers and greeted the strangers. How was your journey? She would ask. Tell me what you learned on your visit. How is your husband? Do you enjoy your new work? She was full of questions for people because her heart was big and she cared about people. They were all the same to her, the beggars and the rich. She cared for all of them just the way they were. But since the little girl thought she had no talent and no gift, she was afraid that the king would be disappointed. She remembered the villagers' advice and set her mind about the task of making a gift for the king. She took a small knife and went to her brother, the carver. Could you teach me to carve? she asked. Sorry, the young craftsman responded without looking up. I've much work to do. I haven't time for you. The king is coming, you know. The girl put away her knife and picked up a brush. She went to her sister, the artist. She found her on a hill painting a sunset on a canvas. You paint so beautifully, said the girl who had no gift, but a big heart. I know, the painter answered. Could you share your gift with me? Not now, the sister responded with eyes on her palette. The king is coming, you know. The girl with no gift then remembered her other sister, the one with the song. She will help me, she said. When she arrived at her sister's house, she found a crowd of people waiting to listen to her sister sing. Sister, she called. Sister, I've come to listen and learn. But her sister couldn't hear. The noise of the applause was too loud. With a heavy heart, the girl turned and walked away. Then she remembered her other brother. She took a book with small words and big letters and went to see him. I have nothing to offer the king, she said. Could you teach me to read so I might show him my wisdom? The young sage-to-be didn't speak. He was lost in thought. The child with no gift spoke again. Could you help me? I have no talent. Go away, said the scholar, scarcely moving his eyes from the text. Can't you see I'm preparing myself for the coming of the king? And so the girl went away sadly. 
She had nothing to give. She returned to her place at the city gates and took up her task of caring for people's animals. After some days, a man in a merchant's clothes came to the small town. Can you feed my donkey? he asked the girl. The orphan jumped to her feet and looked into the brown face of the one who had traveled far. His skin was leathery, leathery from the sun, and his eyes were deep. His kind smile warmed the girl's heart. That I can, she answered eagerly, leading his animal to the trough. Trust him to me. When you return, he will be groomed and fed. Tell me, she asked as the donkey drank, have you come to stay? For only a while. I'm looking for someone. Are you weary from your journey? That I am. Would you like to sit and rest? The girl motioned to a bench near the wall. The tall man sat on the bench, leaned against the wall, closed his eyes, and slept. After a few minutes, he woke and found the girl sitting at his feet, watching his face. She was embarrassed that he had caught her staring. She turned away. Have you been sitting here long? Yes. What do you seek? Nothing. You seem to be a kind man with a peaceful heart. I'm good to be near you. The man smiled and stroked her, stroked his beard. You are a wise girl, he said. When I return, we will visit more. The man did return quite soon. Did you find the ones you were seeking? The girl asked. I found them, but they were too busy for me. What do you mean? The first one I came to see was a woods, a woodsmith rushing to complete a project. He told me to return tomorrow. Another was an artist. I saw her sitting on a hillside but the people below said she did not want to be disturbed. The other was a musician. I sat with the others and listened to her music. When I asked to talk with her, she said she had no time. The other I saw it had left. He had moved to the city to go to school. The girl's eyes widened as she realized who the man was. But you don't look like a king, she gasped. I try not to, he explained. Being a king can be lonely. People act strangely around me. They ask for favors. They try to impress me. They bring me all their complaints. But isn't that what a king is for? Asked the girl. Certainly, responded the king. But there are times when I just want to be with my people. There are times when I want to talk to my people, to hear about their day, to laugh a bit, to cry some. There are times when I just want to be their father. Is that why you adopted the children? That's why. Adults think they have to impress me. Children don't. They just want to talk to me. They know that I love them just the way they are. But my brothers and sisters were too busy. They were. But I'll come back. Maybe they'll have more time another day. The girl hesitated. Sir, what about me? I, I have no gift, and I would like to be your child. The king smiled. My dear, you gave me the best gift of all. You gave your heart. Your kindness, your time, your love. Of course you'll be my child. I love you just the way you are. And so it happened that the children with many talents, but no time, missed the visit of the king, while the girl whose only gift was the gift of her heart became the child of the king. The end. Hi guys. So hopefully you enjoyed that story as much as I did. Like Allie said, the author of that story is Max Lucado, and he actually has many other stories similar to this one, um, that can teach us about God that are really great. I love all of them. So if you have a chance, maybe check some of those out. Um, you won't find these stories in the Bible, but what you will find are scriptures that help support some of the themes that we read. So for example, um, this idea that God really values our heart above the things that we can do for him. There are countless scriptures that talk about that and point us to that truth that God gives his love to us freely. So I've created a document today um, to go with a lesson that has a few of these scriptures as well as some discussion questions. And I'd really encourage you guys to check that out after today's video. Um, I just think it'll help you dive a little bit deeper into this theme of friendship with God um, and just help you to see a little bit more of how much he loves you. So I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great week ahead and I'll see you next week. Bye.